Hello friends, welcome back and welcome if you are new. If you are new and you haven't gotten the full story of the biopsy that I had done, I'm going to kind of fill you in in some of those details, but I will also leave a link to the playlist down below and also up here in an iCard, just so that you can kind of go back and kind of follow the journey that I went on in order to get to this point, and then you'll kind of understand it a little bit better, but I will explain the process that I've gone through a little bit in small detail here. And then I also have a few confessions to make about this biopsy and the result that I have gotten. We'll do a confession really quick before I tell you the result and then I'll do a little story of how we got here. So confession, I got the results within a couple days of getting this biopsy done and forgot to tell Jason. <laughs> I told my dad, told my sister, actually I've told all of my sisters, told my sister-in-law, forgot to tell Jason, my husband, in case you're new. So that was a big fail on my part. I've actually failed to tell some of you who have reached out to me privately and that have been concerned and I have, I, I literally forgot. I forgot, I got the news and I got the results and we'll talk about that here in a second. And then, I don't know, it just spaced my mind. I just kind of like had the results in my head and then, I don't know. So, okay, let's backtrack just a little bit. We're talking about my thyroid and the biopsy that I had done on my thyroid. So you can see the scar and the bruise is still here on my neck. It's actually turning very black. <laughs> it's actually looking even worse than it was a week ago. So we're going to rewind just a little bit and give you a little bit of backstory to where I began this process of getting my thyroid a biopsy. So I volunteer as a test model for a company who tests ultrasound equipment here in our town. And I have been doing this for years. Our kids actually do it. They earn money by plane tickets to go to Hawaii. That's how I'm paying for my next trip to go to Hawaii. So I have been modeling for them for a very long time. When I started doing scans on my thyroid and my chest a couple months ago, those are very common. They kind of pick certain body parts for certain types of their testing with their ultrasound equipment. And they're usually testing software versus like the actual equipment equipment and vice versa. So I had done one of these thyroid exams and they're not necessarily allowed to tell me any medical stuff from what they see during the ultrasounds because it's not a natural medical checkup. But one of the technicians said, I think it's my own due diligence as a person to tell you that you have some nodes on your thyroid and you might want to go get those checked out. It was right around the same time where I was going to get back into going to get my thyroid in check in, to begin with. I have taken about four years off from my thyroid medication. I take levothyroxine for my Hashimoto's disease. I'm hypothyroid. If you are unfamiliar with all that lingo, I've known for 19 years that I've had a thyroid problem. It's actually very common. My sister has the same thing and my mom was the opposite. She, she was hyperthyroid. So I had taken some time off due to insurance and just laziness. I'll just be completely honest. I didn't have an endocrinologist, but this kind of sparked the process of, okay, we need to go and take care of my health. I've been doing some other things with my health and scheduling other appointments with other doctors. And so I was like, okay, let's go and get this kind of stuff checked out. So we checked out my thyroid and found out that yes, we need to get medication, got that going, and we have now leveled out my thyroid with medication. I'll be that on that for the rest of my life. And then when the doctor found out that I had already found out that I had nodes on my thyroid, she then ordered an actual ultrasound to be done in order to prove that and then to diagnose going forward. So back to the imaging, an actual imaging center at the hospital I went and had an ultrasound done and sure enough, like you really do have four to five nodes on your thyroid. At that point, my doctor or ordered the biopsy to be done on it to, to determine whether it was cancerous or not. And apparently this is quite common, whether it's benign or positive for cancer, quite common. And in fact, my mother had just had her her thyroid radioactively treated about a month before she passed away this year this current year and so it's quite common and so in talking to my dad who is a physician my sister-in-law is a nurse practitioner my sisters are both nurses I've, I've been able to like talk to a lot of medical people that are personally in my life that I wasn't too scared going into this process and I also knew that if it was cancerous taking out the thyroid it completely eliminates cancer and you do not have to treat beyond that and you can live without your thyroid for the rest of your life. I knew going into that biopsy what all of the scenarios were going to be. So I, I guess I wasn't too scared until like the night before. And for whatever reason, I kind of got nervous and I didn't I didn't really talk about it. And I didn't even like talk to Jason about it, my husband the morning of, and just kind of went to my appointment. And then right at the last minute, I was kind of bothered that no one had reached out and wished me luck. And it was because I had gone silent myself. And so I went into that biopsy, we did it, and I was expecting to get the results. My doctor had told me the results were gonna take about a week. And 
then it was gonna take her some time to read the results and get back to me. When I went to that biopsy, the doctor who did it, he actually told me that the results were gonna be available within two to three days, which I thought was interesting from my doctor's perspective versus the biopsy doctor. That was interesting. I did the biopsy and they went to two different nodes. I think maybe you can see on camera there's two different locations, but maybe the top section is now not bruised as much. But they went into two different nodes and took five biopsies from each node and that was just a needle into the node and then they like jam the cells into the needle in order to get the right samples. That's kind of where we're at with this video. I thought I was gonna have a week to wait for the results and I suddenly got a message on my MyChart. That was just how our hospital runs all of our test results from all of our appointments. And I clicked on it thinking it wouldn't be anything but you went to this biopsy, it was, you know, this is what was done and you know, wait for the results. The, the results were right there. <laughs> I could read them. And I, I took a screenshot of them and I sent them to my father. And I said, are you reading what I'm reading? Like, am I, like, I don't know why it takes a doctor a week to read this and to determine what the biopsy results are, or, or am I losing my mind? And my dad called me immediately, and he was like, Dana, and I, I'm almost more grateful that it was my dad that was able to physically confirm with me over the phone, and I'll explain why in a second, but, um, they're negative. It's negative. I, like, I don't have cancer. And I don't have to do surgery. I don't have to have the remove. I think it kind of hits me at different times from like, okay, it's good, you know? But my dad called me and he was like, Dana, like, it literally says, like, they're all benign. There's no chance that any of them are cancerous. They don't even need to send any of the samples off for molecular testing. They weren't questionable at all. And so that was very good news. And the reason why I say that I'm glad it was my dad who was physically able to say those words to me personally, even though that was medically not the person that would give the official okay to me to that they were benign my doctor still hasn't called me I don't know if she just is not a personal person or she's a busy doctor. I've had this problem with her since the beginning. Hang on, no, don't, no, no. Sorry about that. I've got my eight year old home from school. It's half day, so I had to shoo her upstairs. I don't know what it is with my doctor, but she doesn't think it's necessary for her to have a physical conversation with me. Over the phone, virtual, in person, nothing. She doesn't find it necessary to do so. She just typed a message, benign, all your nodes are fine. I need to see you in a year, have a good day. And while that is okay, and technically like hey you gave me the information I'm glad it was my dad that told me the first time that I was fine because I never got that from my doctor I'm a very personal person I am an emotional person clearly if you've seen this channel before you know dude I just did my makeup I have a Christmas party tonight <laughs> And I never put anything underneath my eyes for this reason. My eyes just water and I cry. So I'm grateful that it is benign. I do have to go back every year because I have five nodes. They still have the potential of growing a cancerous cell on them. They grow slowly uh, so it's not noticeable and you know we have to wait time in order for it to, anything to pop up. But a year is not unreasonable by any means. If something were to grow, it would grow very slowly over the next year and we could still do something about it next year. It's not gonna grow this massive like you know cantaloupe size cancerous tumor over a year time it would be like centimeter and then they would just remove the thyroid so that full circle like everything in a nutshell and I do feel bad that I one haven't reached out to a lot of you that were messaging me privately sometimes I did and then on yesterday's video and that that's when it kind of occurred to me my video came out of my actual biopsy I'm I'm ahead on my channel and so sometimes I forget what video is gonna post every day even though I'm pretty meticulous about checking it and making sure everything goes out correctly and then commenting and responding back to you guys I forgot that that video was gonna go up yesterday and I, I, I was busy all day yesterday I was busy all day the day before and so I forgot and now I have over a dozen comments on that video of you guys just <sighs> being there for me and I wanted to like, I, I guess I wanted to make sure I did a video to like thank you because I still don't have time to go and, re and respond to those messages for like another hour and a half or two and I may not be able to get a chance to tonight because I have to go to a Christmas party and I don't wanna, I don't wanna respond to your messages. <sighs> One, because I have makeup on and I don't want to respond and cry when I'm typing the messages in and reading your comments because you guys share your love with me and I appreciate it so much. I have, bef I've 
become friends with you guys. And some of you I've actually met in person, Lydia, and I want to be sincere in my responses, but I also feel an obligation to tell you what the results are in person like this, as close to in person as I can, because while you guys are just watching that biopsy video and I could share the results in my comment today, I could respond to every single one of you and tell you it's negative, it's negative, it's negative, everything is fine. I'm not, not responding for a clickbait for this video. I need you to see from me. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your concern. I want you to see this first and then I will respond and tell you it's negative on those comments. I'll respond to the comments themselves and just tell you thank you for your concern and stay tuned for the results because I want you guys to see it from me. I think part of the downfall to YouTube is that you don't get a chance to like if it's just comments that we're reading and writing back and forth as, as part of interaction. <laughs> there's a lack of a personal response. I want you guys to know that there's there's a lot of conversation in this house about you guys. I tell my kids, hey, Lydia likes your dress, Chelsea. You look really cute at church today because she just texted me while I'm sitting here in church. She's like, Lydia likes my dress? The one you met in Hawaii? They still are eating the snacks that were sent from Canada. By the way, I'm really sorry to tell you the ketchup chips are not good. I'm so, so sorry. They're just not very good. So they're still sitting in there and I'm waiting for teenage boys to just be hungry and take them. <laughs> but all the other snacks are gone. You guys are a part of our life and I just wanted to make sure I did this video and showed you my raw emotion as I'm kind of dealing with like finally, you know, acknowledging that I don't have cancer and that it's okay to talk about and you know, like someone today, she was like, do you have a giant black bruise on your neck? And I kind of joke about it. I'm like, oh, Jason punched me in the jugular. Cause even with friends, I wasn't really ready to like tell them I had a biopsy and it's negative. I don't know why, even though I know now what my reason results are. I've told very close friends, but I just felt like, you know, it's just kind of personal. And I don't know, I, I don't mind sharing. Obviously, like I have a YouTube channel and I share my feelings, but sometimes I guess maybe the past two years have made me retract in with my personal feelings because I've been hurt by a lot of people and hurt by other people's actions, I guess, this past two years. Um, and so I'm more guarded with my personal feelings and my personal experiences in life. And so I'm rambling. I, I don't know. I can't really see if I'm crying and have my glasses on. Thank you. Thank you so much for being there for me, for my kids, for my husband. You know, he is the best. I really, truly feel bad that I forgot to tell him. I think he's just so busy. I don't want you to think that we don't have a relationship where we talk and we share these kinds of things with each other. He's just working so much. He leaves before I wake up. Sometimes he leaves at six o'clock in the morning if he can't keep sleeping through the night. He just gets up and he goes to work and he doesn't come home until seven o'clock at night. So he's pulling 13, sometimes 14 hour days and he's exhausted and he wants to take a shower or work out and then take a shower and do nothing. Sit and watch a Marvel movie on his computer. And then I'm in bed. And so I just, I feel bad, you know, that I didn't tell him right away. I had the knowledge in my head and I was fine. So I just moved on with my life. <laughs> so anyway, so I just wanted to thank you guys for joining me on this little journey. We are fine going forward. I am on thyroid medication now for the rest of my life and I'm moderating it. I do have to go in and get a mammogram. I have to wait now three more weeks after my booster that I just had for the, va the vaccine booster. I can't get the mammogram for another three weeks, so I figure I'm gonna get a doctor appointment next year and then go ahead and go forward with a mammogram. So that is also scary for me to do. I've never done it. COVID kind of took a number on pushing that out and getting that done, and so that's what I'm gonna work on next year is these ladies need to be checked, and there's breast cancer in my family. My grandma had it. She got it when she was 90 something. So I know that it's there in my family and I even have a friend who got tested for the BRCA gene and I have actually talked to Jason about it. I don't know what the cost or the process is, but these ladies are dense. I've had them ultrasounded so many times at the scan place that I go to. They like them because <laughs> There's a lot of material for them to work with with their equipment. And I do have a lipoma on my right chest. They have found that. But I feel like because they examine these often at the volunteer place that I go to, I think I'm okay. I am gonna go get the mammogram as soon as I can. I just physically can't go and get it right now because my booster took a higher priority, in case you don't know. So if you've gotten your booster vaccine and then you were to go and get a mammogram, the booster, this third dose, is causing the lymph nodes to react. They swell, they hurt, they're achy, and that will throw off your results from a mammogram. And so you can't go 
know within four weeks of getting the booster shot. And that's why I'm kind of pushing out that appointment until next year and we'll just start fresh next year and go and worry about that kind of stuff. So if you are within a, an age bracket that you need to go get your mammogram and you're also going to get your booster, you gotta time, you gotta plan for those things these days. So I just will end on all the female <laughs> stuff that we need to get taken care of. And thank you again. Enjoy your holidays. As you can see, if you're finding this in July next year, it is the holidays. This is just what I'm currently dealing with, but take care and hopefully you stick around for more. And I have appreciated those of you who have reached out that have gone through this, given me a lot of encouragement and also comfort in knowing that there's other people who have survived and they're fine and they've gone through it. Thank you for reaching out to me. Let me down know in the comments down below if you're going through anything like this and how I can help you. Take care and we'll talk to you next time.